Hello, my name is Russell Myers. Welcome to Issues Unite. Welcome back to part two of uh, Biden's uh, initial uh, State of the Union address. So uh, I'm just going to continue on from here. Okay, so. Our transportation infrastructure, jobs, modernizing our roads, bridges, highways, jobs, building ports and airports. Wait. Our attitudes as well as our opportunities. Well, dog us it. into the future. That's why I propose the American Jobs Plan, a once in a generation of the nation's lead pipes and service lines, so every American can drink clean water. Yeah, there's a concept. And the process will create thousands and thousands of good paying jobs. It creates jobs connecting every American with high speed internet, including 35% of the rural America that still doesn't have it. The, you have to pay attention to the wording here, which I have already mentioned in previous videos connecting people to internet. That is not providing people with internet. They will still be in debt. What this provides is the network for corporations to charge you for internet, okay? That's what this does. This is just more corporate welfare. By doing this, you know, if we invested in this properly, we could not just connect Americans to Internet. We could provide Internet service to each and every American free of charge. That is completely reasonable and doable. The American Jobs Plan will help millions of people get back to their jobs and back to their careers. Two million women have dropped out of the workforce during this pandemic. Two million. And too often because they couldn't get the care they needed to care for their child or care for an elderly parent who needs help. 800,000 families are on the Medicare waiting list right now to get home care for their aging parent or loved one with disability. If you think it's not important, check out in your own district, Democrat or Republican, Democrat or Republican voters, their great concern, almost as much as their children, is taking care of an elderly loved one. Okay, I'm actually going to uh, give him credit for what he's proposing here, but it still doesn't go into how this is going to happen. During the past year, many people in the medical field have left the medical field um, permanently, and the number of people entering the medical field has plummeted. And how are you going, how are you going to provide medical services without medical personnel? And medical personnel, well, yeah, you know, for one thing, who wants to go through and, and accrue that much debt to go to medical, you know, nursing school or medical school, etc. So unless that's being addressed, then the problem is not being addressed. And you can give all the rhetoric that you want. But until you actually address these issues, you're not going to solve any problems. Job. Job. For me, when I think climate change, I think jobs. American Jobs Plan will put engineers and construction workers to work building more energy-efficient buildings and homes, electrical workers, IBEW members installing 500,000 charging stations along our highways, 
so we can own so we can own the electric car market. By saying that he wants to own the electric car market, that means that at some point in the future it's going to be mandated that everybody drive electric cars, and that is the future. But, you know, to be even considering such a thing at this moment, I find to be, you know, not the greatest thing to put forward. And uh, as far as, you know, uh, jobs, 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 what... If those are not government jobs, if those are not jobs being hired to work for the federal government, then it means profit, profit, profit for corporations, corporations, corporations. Okay. American workers can't lead the world in the production of electric vehicles and He batteries. said there's no reason there Americans no reason. can't. You have this capacity. The brightest, best trained people in the world. The American Jobs Plan is going to create millions of good paying jobs, jobs Americans can raise a family on. As my dad would then say, with a little breathing room. And all the investments. He's so in sick of hearing Jobs about his father. Be guided by one principle buy American. Buy American. And I might note parenthetically. That does not, that does not violate any trade agreement. It's been the law since the 30s, buy American. American tax dollars are going to be used to buy American products made in America to create American jobs. That's the way it's supposed to be and it will be in this administration. It is going to take longer than this administration to rebuild our manufacturing capacity. Um, you know, you don't come back from decades of crushing, allowing capitalists that are still in charge, uh, you know, of manufacturing that have deported jobs and crushed manu American manufacturing. Those same people are not going to turn around and suddenly build manufacturing plants here. It's not going to happen. It is going to take years for our manufacturing capacity to be recovered in any appreciable manner. So when he says, you know, buy American, we're not producing anything. We are not producing anything to buy except food, and even a lot of our food is imported. Okay, so this is a major thing to me. Independent experts estimate the American Jobs Plan will add millions of jobs and trillions of dollars to economic growth in the years to come. It is a it is a eight year program. These are good paying jobs that can't be outsourced. Nearly ninety percent of the infrastructure jobs created in the American Jobs Plan do not require a college degree. Seventy five percent don't require an associate's degree. The American Jobs Plan is a blue-collar blueprint to build America. That's what it is. So what I'm hearing here, you know, okay, I'm all for blue-collar jobs. I've been blue-collar most of my life. And, you know, pretty much still am. But this is just like discouraging higher education. This is making an excuse for not funding higher education to any appreciable degree. Sure, a whole lot of something I've always said in this chamber and the other. Good guys and women on Wall Street, but Wall Street didn't build this country. The middle class built the country, and unions built the middle class. And Wall Street crushed the unions. So, and who's getting bailed out with the American Jobs Plan and the ARP and the infrastructure thing? 80 to 90 percent of all of this goes to corporations 
and it is trickle-down economics. It goes to the corporations who decide how much you get paid. It takes too long to get consensus. Food in his teeth. To win that competition for the future, in my view, we also need to make a once-in-a-generation investment in our families and our children. That's why I've introduced the American Families Plan tonight, which addresses four of the biggest challenges facing American families and, in turn, America. First is access to good education. Access. When this nation made 12 years of public education universal in the last century, it made us the best educated, best prepared nation in the world. It's, I believe, the overwhelming reason that propelled us to where we got in the 21st, in the 20th century. But the world's caught up or catching up. They're not waiting. I would say parenthetically, if we were sitting down, we set a bipartisan committee together and said, okay, we're going to decide what we do in terms of government providing for free education. I wonder whether we'd think, as we did in the 20th century, that 12 years is enough in the 21st century. I doubt it. 12 years is no longer enough today to compete with the rest of the world in the 21st century. That's why my American Families Plan guarantees four additional years of public education for every person in America, starting as early as we can. Well, the great universities in this country have conducted studies of the last 10 years. It shows that adding two years of universal high-quality preschool for every three-year-old and four-year-old, no matter what background they come from, puts them in the position of Okay, so for the American Family Plan, I think I'm just going to um, hold off on the video and watch it and then recap because he's taking way too long to get to the point. So let me do that and I'll be uh, recapping in just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to take this a little bit at a, at a time. All right, so first, uh, you know, increased education. He talks about two years of pre-K. Uh, which is school for children. Okay, I'm fine with that. But uh, what about expanding hours on pre-K? Uh, because this does nothing to help parents that have alternative schedules, the people that work on the evening shift, the night shift, you know, look how many nurses work 12-hour shifts. Uh, look how many people that work in retail and service industries work the evening shift. I myself work the night shift. My daughter has grown, but, you know, what position would it be putting me in if my daughter were still young? I, you know, my ex and I work things out. Uh, so that that always was not so much of an issue that I worked the night shift. In fact, it worked to our advantage um, in many ways. But, you know, so that doesn't really help if you're talking about uh, pre-K on standard schedules. Um, then he talks about two years of community college. And then he says, uh, any <laughs> country that uh, uh, out-educates us will outdo us. Well, look at other countries that have universal adult education, and you get a full four-year college degree, possibly even university, uh, you know, without... Uh, having to pay tuition so other countries will still be out educating us so that so that's uh you know that's kind of a false you, know, you cannot educate people in two years to equal a four year six year eight year degree 
you just can't do it. All right, so then uh, he talks about child care and, and uh, you know, guaranteeing that parents will pay no more than 7% of their income toward child care. Okay, 7% of $100,000 is one thing. 7% of $30,000 is a significant amount. So, yeah, you know, he talks about access. Again, it's always access to something that you have to pay more for. Uh, so, you know, what are they going to have to work 7% more hours to make up the difference? Uh, you know, what have you. All right, so I cut off the video uh, too early, and he says the most hard-pressed families, of course, he doesn't define the most hard-pressed families, won't have to spend anything on child care. Um, yeah, if we're going by the official definition uh, of the poverty line, a family of four with an income of $28,000 is, you know, at the poverty line, the 28, you know, how do you support a family of four on $28,000? It needs to be higher than that. So we can't use that definition of poverty. Okay, so uh, he actually says something that I'm absolutely behind 100%, providing up to 12 weeks. Of course, that's up to 12 weeks. I mean, one day could be up to 12 weeks of uh, paid family and medical leave. So we've got to hear more about this. Uh, you know, and maybe it's already been put forward uh, and I missed it recently in the time that I have I've been uh, out from the channel. But, you know, saying up to 12 weeks uh, it is questionable to me, but uh, but it's a step forward. At least it's recognizing that uh, something that other countries are far ahead of us on. And he does recognize that. All right, so he goes on to talk about um, the expansion of earned income tax credit. The thing that he leaves out is that that expansion is temporary. So unless that is made permanent, uh, it's yes, it's an immediate benefit, but in the long term, um, not so much. Yeah. So we have to wait and see if this is going to be made permanent, and and if it happens at all. All right, so I'm going to cut off uh, part two of this uh, you know, review here, and I will continue on with part three shortly. And uh, you know, so I hope you join me for part three. Um, some of this is very good. And, you know, I admit some of this is very good, depending on how and if it gets implemented. So, I mean, I can hope it's, you know, a lot of this is a, a tremendous step forward, depending on how we go forward from here. And if he's not willing to fight for it, and the Democrats are not willing to fight for it, and, uh, you know, ignore the parliamentarian the Senate parliamentarian and, uh, you know, pressure, uh, you know, cinema and mansion, if they're not willing to exert pressure on their own people, then it, it's all rhetoric. It, it means nothing. It means nothing until, uh, you know, they fight for it. All right, so, so I hope you join me for part three, and I will see you in that one. Now again, talk about these subjects, 
share this video. If you can, please donate a dollar a month uh, to help expand the channel. And I will see you in the next one.